f from omega is holomorphic, then there does not exist such that the absolute value of z0 is equal to the supremum of f of z z belong to omega. Okay, proof. All right. So tell me why that sounds like it should be true. Let's draw a picture. So we have our set omega. We are mapping it over here. Okay? So whatever zero is, suppose zero is here. Then on this picture, what would be the z that, that maximizes this quantity? I mean, what would be the point that maximizes this quantity? It'd be like this point over here, right? So this distance here, so I didn't really, there should be at right angles, didn't really do this right. So this distance here would be the thing that gives this quantity right here. So this thing would be the supremum Yeah. Cool. All right. So our claim is there exists no Z0 which achieves this thing. Okay. So suppose that wasn't true. Suppose that wasn't true. That means what? That means that we have some Z0, yeah, that achieves this. And it might occur in numerous places, right? There could be more than one place which achieves this. But in our picture, I've just drawn one, right? Yeah. So in our picture, if there exists a Z0 such that this is true, where is f of Z0? Where is f of Z0 in that case? Yeah, it would have to be here, right? So if there exists a Z0 such that f of Z0 achieves this thing, it would have to exist here. Yeah? Yeah? So let's argue by contradiction. So suppose this is false. <clears throat> okay, so on our picture, this is where the Z zero would have to be. Right? Sorry, not the Z zero, such that the F of Z zero would have to be. Right? f of z0 has to be here. Yeah? And why do we not believe f of z0 can be here? It should be an open set. So this thing should have a ball around it. Right? So there should be a ball around this point inside of our set like this. Yeah? And if there was a ball around this guy, then this would not actually achieve the maximum, right? This would not achieve the maximum. So from the pictures, this theorem is, 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 is really not surprising at all. Yeah. This is not surprising at all. Yeah. But now what we're going to do is we're going to describe these pictures in the language of maths to create a proof. Yeah? Which is what we do essentially all the time. But in this case, it's really rather directly from the picture. So, uh, so suppose such that there is true, then for some, Delta bigger than zero, we have the ball of radius delta around f of z zero is actually contained within f of omega because f of omega is open. But then consider the point like this. So consider. Uh, 
say w0, which is equal to f of z0 plus delta times f of z0 over absolute value f of z0. So what am I doing? Uh, let's do a delta over 2. So what am I doing? So here is f of z0. Over here is somewhere like 0, right? So I'm taking the direction f of z0 uh, over absolute value f of z0, so the unit vector in this direction, and I'm moving things forward up to here. Yeah? So therefore, this point right here, which is f of z0 plus delta f of z0 over absolute value f of z0, this guy for sure is further away from 0 than f of z0, because I've moved in the same direction. Yeah? Yeah, see what I mean? So this point is inside the ball, because it's only moving by delta over 2. Yeah. So for some, say, uh, let's call it, uh, let's call it uh, Z1 inside Omega, we have that, that F of Z1 actually is W0. Actually, since we're going one, let's call this W1. So F of Z1 equals W1. Yeah. And absolute value F of Z1 is, what is it? Well, this thing, it's the absolute value of, of just W1. And what is that? That is equal to absolute value F of Z0, 1 plus delta over 2 F of Z0, like this, yeah? Like this, absolute value, and then this is absolute value F of Z0 times this quantity, and that is strictly bigger than this thing, which is meant to be the supremum of omega f of z like this. So then that's a contradiction, right? So we find a point inside omega which is bigger than the supremum of the absolute value of all of f inside omega. Contradiction. So this is not possible. So we cannot find So, theorem is proved. Yeah, there cannot possibly be a Z0 such that F of Z0 achieves this maximum, this supremum right here. Yeah? And it's rather, it's rather, rather easy consequence. So writing it out in the language is somewhat long, but it's exactly this picture I've drawn here, right? Exactly this picture I've drawn here. Cool. All right. So this is called the maximum modulus principle. And um, it's, actually a, it's actually a special case of a more general theorem for harmonic functions. So recall what a harmonic function is. So recall, use harmonic. If and only if the Laplacian of u is equal to zero, i.e., so in two dimensions, second derivative with respect to x of u plus the second derivative with respect to y of u is equal to zero. Okay? And we learned that these things satisfy the mean value property. So we learned in the sense that uh, I told you this. And I showed you that if it does so that the fact that this is true for harmonic functions implies Cauchy integral formula for holomorphic functions, right? So uh, we have this, and we know that if we take one over two pi r, 
and then we integrate around the boundary the ball of radius r around x of our function, and we integrate with one dimensional one that you know we do this one dimensional curve integral, which I'm going to write with respect to Hausdorff measure because this is the proper way to do this. Then this thing is exactly equal to the value in the center, right? This is this property I told you that if we take some circle and we average around the boundary of the circle, it exactly equals the values in the center. And we thought about this as well uh, as the steady state of the heat equation. And I and I and I said you can you can you can see or you can you can your intuition tells you that that should be true. If we have heat flowing from a hot place to a cold place, right? Then if we take a circle, yeah, you know, then then some parts will be colder and some parts will be hotter, right? And it's not it's not it's not it's not counterintuitive that that the thing in the center will be some kind of will be something in the middle of what's in the, around the outside. And in fact, it's exactly it's exactly an average. Yeah. So this is the mean value property for harmonic functions. Okay. And I claim that this implies the same thing. Yeah? And from this, there cannot be a x0 such that the absolute value of u of x0 is equal to the supremum over whatever domain we have of the absolute value. Okay, so tell me why you believe that. Why from this thing here, the mean value property, so this is mean value property, Why do we have the same thing? Try and visualize the situation. Think of a function of two variables as being a mountain landscape always, right? So the x and the y on the on the table, and u of x, y is the height above the table or below the table if it's negative. Yeah? And give yourself a positive function just to make life easier. Yeah? Okay, so why is this true as a constant mean value theorem? Right, yeah, I have to say that, yeah, you cannot be constant, thanks, if u is not constant. So, we have a non-constant u, tell me why it's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're thinking of a sequence of, 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 of steps we could use, but tell me geometrically why. Tell me geometrically why. So you're on, a, you're on a mountain landscape. Suppose you arrive at your point x0, which is the absolute top of the mountain. Yeah? It's the absolute top of the mountain. And it's not at the edge of your of your planet, so you're not on the edge of. So you're, or, or let's make a metaphor like this. So you have an island, okay? You're walking on your island. It's mountainous island, and you get to the top of the highest highest mountain on the island, and it's not on the coast. It's actually in the center, or it's away from the coast of the island. Yeah, but the island, the island's mountains are harmonic. They satisfy the mean value property. So you're standing there on the top of the highest mountain. And you're thinking something's wrong because... So here's the sideways picture of you standing here on the top of the mountain. Yeah? But you satisfy the mean value property, right? Which means if you look down and you draw some circle around yourself and you average the height around the circle of the mountain, right? That thing should be the same as your height. Yeah, but you're on the top of the mountain. So if you look at the circle around you, every point is actually underneath you, right? It's beneath you. Yeah. So there's no way the average of the things that are beneath your feet can possibly be the same height as your feet. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. 
Cool. Right. So you're looking from the sideways, if you look at the circle underneath you or any circle, then you see this thing and it's actually directly underneath you, right? So it can't possibly be the case that the average of those values, you know? And then expressing that idea in the language of maths is exactly the sequence of steps that 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 that, that Mahami said. So uh, let me draw a little mountain again over here on the side. So this is the mountain. This is you standing right here at the top. And what do we do? So we have that uh, absolute value u of x0 is the absolute value of the average around the outside. So 1 over 2 pi r, the integral, uh -huh. I have to redraw it again, the third time, integral of and the boundary of the ball of radius x0 of u of z, dh1 of z, absolute value. Let's take the absolute value signs inside the integral. So we have 1 over 2 pi i, 2 pi r, and then this integral. like this, and then this thing is less than the supremum of u over the entire domain, right? That's less than the supremum of absolute value of u of omega, dh1 of z. This thing no longer depends on z, we can pull it out. So then we just have that this is just the supremum of the value of u over uh, over omega. So we have that u of x zero is less than the supremum. It can't possibly uh, be equal to the supremum because we actually have strict inequalities here. So as we do this step to this step, it's actually a strict inequality because this is where the function is strictly less than where we were before. Yeah? So we have that this guy is strictly less than the supremum, where it's supposed to achieve it, so contradiction. So, yeah. This is exactly just expressing the geometrical idea in the language of maths, right? Yeah. And I'd, I'd rather you you first have the geometrical idea and then you express it rather than think in terms of, of inequalities that you can do to achieve the goal. First have the picture and then use the picture as your guide. Yeah. And often the picture exactly tells you what to do. And even when there's no direct... I mean, this is a literal translation of the picture, and so is this. And even when there isn't a literal translation of the picture, it's usually because there's been some kind of simplification and uh, optimization. And you can still prove it just directly following the picture if you have clear enough pictures.